This is On FM on 101.4. Good afternoon and welcome to On FM Radio. This is Mark Sacconi here with a uh, an hour show today. We've got some guests in the studio this afternoon and we'll be talking about um, how you can cope when losing a, a, a child too soon. I'm joined in the studio with Sam Bennett and Tracy Adkins. And Tracy's here to support Sam on various different issues, which we'll find a little bit more out in the uh, the show. Now, first of all, I'd like to speak to Sam. And uh, Sam, can you tell us a bit more about your story? Um, yeah, I can. Pixie, um, my daughter, Tink Pixie Tinkerbell, she was born at 21 weeks um, pregnant, which is under the gestation period. Okay. Um, when I was nearly 21 weeks pregnant, I all of a sudden took very ill. Um, nothing medically, I just felt that I was going to die. Right. Um, to the point being, I kept going to bed, just felt generally not myself. Um, and my husband took me up to the hospital to be seen in the triage which is the little area of the midwives that check you to see whether you're in labour etc um, I went there and they couldn't find anything wrong with me but they thought possibly I had something wrong with my sinuses or swine flu because my husband had had swine flu three weeks prior and because I was due to have my abnormally scan the next day they decided to keep me in and to just keep observe me really okay um, they scanned, scanned me and I saw Pixie on the scan and her heart was beating fine. Um, basically, I was just told to lie down and rest and wait till tomorrow. Um, the next day came and obviously it was my scan and I knew I had to go for my scan. And the midwives and that come into the room and told me that... Oh God, this is just so hard, sorry. They just come into the room and told me that they didn't know whether or not I could go for my scan because they were waiting on these results from the swine flu. But I told them I was adamant and I was going to go. Right. Um, in the end, they gave me the go-ahead to go along for my scan and off I went with my friend Claire. And they started, the, the sonographer started doing the scan and was telling me the measurements of my baby and saying how healthy my baby looked. And then all of a sudden looked up to me and said, my baby had died. <laughs> Which is uh, a terrible thing for any mum or expecting mum to go through it, uh, you know. Um, obviously, you can understand this is a very sensitive uh, uh, cause and uh, discussion we're having this afternoon, so um, we do understand how upsetting this could be towards you, Sam. Are you okay to carry on? Yeah. Okay. Um, obviously, I started screaming and shouting and smashing things, demanding a second opinion. And after some time, they got this other person in to re-scan me, and it was confirmed. <laughs> Um, I can then remember running out of the building and straight away I had like a herd of nurses and doctors and just receptionists, you know, you name it, they were all there trying to calm me down but telling me now I had to go and deliver my baby. Right, and, uh, and and this is this is where I step in because it does become very hard for Sam. She went through 17 hours labour to give birth to her baby. Although the baby was deceased, she still gave, went through 17 hours labour to give birth. Right. And, and this is really, as I speak about Sleeping Angels Unite, is what, what we are all about, is by putting a voice across and saying that sometimes the insensitive issues that Sam follows from on this story, which are far too sensitive to go into, to be quite honest, but yeah. we are quite willing to talk about it on other serious issues shows, um, we're, we're quite pleased to talk about it further, as Sam Hills, but um, it just shows that, you know, for every mother out there, this is not something that just happens. She will live with this for the rest of her life. And it's obviously it's quite a sensitive uh, and emotional time for I mean, I, I any, any conversation. Them, yeah. You know, even that you have to go through this procedure of taking all these tablets to, to bring the labour on, etc., etc. And I felt, though, even though my daughter had died, I felt that I was murdering my daughter. <laughs> and I asked for a C-section, but I wasn't allowed because my baby was under the 24 week gestation i asked for so much help because she was under because of the law and being under the gestation period you're not allowed it which for anybody that doesn't know means the baby isn't a baby until it's 24 weeks by right. law um, yep. so they they halt some some hospitals to the extent they halt medicines um all help because it's not covered by the government we're aware of how much it costs a b to keep a baby alive it's seven thousand pounds a day right yeah um but there are lots of organizations out there that are raising the money to keep those babies alive you know and, and that's what once again we're we're part of is to 
to, to start to do that, which is later in the show when we'll tell you all the good things that are happening because of these babies and the mother's sufferings. I mean, they did give me one choice, and that choice was to hurry up and get into labour and deliver Pixie, or to carry my baby over the Christmas period, knowing that my baby was dead inside me. Which is uh, not a very good thing for, no. for any mother, or expect a mother to be. No, you know. and then, um, so obviously I took the tablets and went through the labour procedures, being told that I could have my baby with me as long as I wanted afterwards. Um, it got to the point being none of these tablets worked, the, the morphine wasn't working, they couldn't aid me, um, and in the end I ended up delivering my baby um, at 2.22 on Christmas Day. So Chris, this is how it changed your way of Christmases from now onwards, oh, I can imagine. Christmas. Yeah, I can really imagine. Um, obviously, I, I see here you've, you've been in face, uh, contact with Facebook as well, and you've done quite a lot with Facebook work as well. Can yeah. you tell us a bit more about that? Um, well, it got to a point being that I was constantly sitting on my floor in the kitchen, a nervous wreck, emotional, suicidal thoughts, you, you name it, everything was going through my head, like, why me? And then my good friend Tracy and my other good friend Claire were like, no, come on, you've got to get together, you've got to have a, a mission, you've got to turn, even though she's my daughter and it was a big negative in my life, I had to turn it positive, which is the hardest thing to do. So I have six other children. I have lost 12 children prior to Pixie who were miscarriages. Um, the law say Pixie was a miscarriage, she wasn't. I delivered her, she was fully formed. and. My other children are always doing TV work and being in the newspapers and making a name for them and I had to do the same for Pixie even though she's not here. So myself, Tracy and Claire are Pixie's voice now and... Um, and voices for thousands of others because yeah. when we opened up the Facebook group thousands of women came forward and families 000. with their stories, 32,000 members we have now. And some of these stories are... Some of these Quite stories horrific. are, are horrific. horrific. Yeah. If you think this one, this one you've only touched on the outskirts, they are horrific, you know, and it, it's almost barbaric in the 21st century to have this, and it's all because of the abortion laws. Mm. Yeah. And that's, you know, how you can put a baby that is wanted in the same bracket as a baby that is unwanted. You know, these are the things that it's, it and it's just three, doesn't add up. There's three mums out of ten mums a week who are catching the E. coli bug group B streptococcal, um, which is actually killing the babies and also killing the parents. Um, that's what I had. There are many the statistics others. are quite high and on stillbirths. Right, yeah. And there's not any information for a test with mums to be to have this test to see if they're going to get it, you know. The infections are what ki are killing the babies, and the infections are killing the parents as well. And this needs to be a thing that needs to needs to be, be aware, made awareness. Yeah. yeah. The other thing is, uh, um, obviously, that you set up a charity, or you're wanting to set up a charity, but at the moment you set a website up for Sleeping Angels Unite. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. 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 We Can decided um, that we'd put something together and start to open up the portals, as it were, to get our word out there from. From the mother's point of view, you know, that we, we thought there's no point fighting a law that's being fought for so long and nothing's being done about it. So we, we're just going to try and push the simple changes that can be made. And, and Sleeping Angels Unite came up, we came up with Unite so that we believe that if every group unites, there's so many groups out there, if groups start to unite, we will be a bigger force. A bigger voice. A bigger voice to change simple things, i.e., putting a mother that's lost her child in the same ward as mothers that have just had their child and are celebrating just to me is quite insensitive, insensitive. Yeah. I mean you know. it is I mean there's me holding my daughter and all I'm hearing is other babies which is obviously it's not it's just bringing and that's a simple more thing emotions. That we can change that's a simple thing that we can change in 24 hours you know you know and then you have to walk out of that hospital with your little box when all the other mums are walking out with their babies, you know, it's not right all going through the same door. So what's the response you've had on Facebook from setting up this group? Oh, God, the support has been the spirit terrific. The spirit behind yeah. the group is unbelievable. You know, it's, it's really quite touching. If anybody goes onto the Facebook group, they will read hundreds of stories and hundreds of support and we've had a few men come forward which is men don't come forward we'd love you to come forward you know at the end of the day this does affect you 
as well and we know what you boys are like we know you're <laughs> yeah don't we sam yeah, my husband's one. <laughs> but, but come forward you know because why should uh, somebody this will affect sam for the rest of her life yeah. and thousands of other women if we don't make it a little bit better or easier to deal with the fact that they've lost a child let alone have it in extra wounds scarred open by no certificates you yeah. know the baby wasn't even viable i mean they need to give the mums the choice if i had wanted to mums abort, need more choice yeah That's if i wanted say. to abort pixie then you know i would have done that but no i, I gave birth to her and i i want a birth certificate so. okay well we're going to take a look a bit more about the facebook group and also we've got some more information about the exhibition which we'll be touching on in just a few minutes time this is on fm on 101.4 This is Mark Sacconi here with you through to around about 2 o'clock this afternoon. I've got some guests in the studio where we're just discussing about how you can cope with losing your baby too early and also um, about the sites and uh, the groups on Facebook that they've set up called Sleeping Angels Unite. Now, uh, I've got Tracy in the studio along with Sam Bennett here. And uh, Tracy, can you just tell us a bit more about uh, the Sleeping Angels Unite and how or where you want to take it in the future yep uh, sleeping angels unite uh, we've decided that we're going to concentrate on changes that can be made within 24 hours if needs be for people that are out there listening and um, the awareness of the laws that before 24 weeks um, a child is not viable needs to be seriously looking at uh, raising the awareness awareness of the insensitive issues that women and families are dealt um, are dealt with by the medical professions in some areas and some hospitals because they're not all the same we've had as many really good stories right no not as many actually but we have had some good stories some positive some positives um and the things that we uh, first of all we need to become a charity which we'll be talking about in the next section because i'm an artist a local artist i shall be holding an exhibition to right. raise five thousand pounds for us to become a charity and then our other little aims can come into um play where we'll be setting up bereavement rooms in local hospitals yeah the bereavement rooms um is because they're putting mums whose babies are but being born too soon into actual labour wards and so we want bereavement rooms so to keep them separate. A separate side but also with ice rooms in there for the babies so that their babies can stay with them for as long as they want rather than the more porters come and take your baby because your baby smells yeah which is some of the things that that's understandable we get told and also equipment i.e the ice box um also little things like our own certificates you know if if the law aren't aren't going to um acknowledge these babies we at sleeping angels will we yeah. do have we do have a whole list that sam is just about to mention a few of the kids are, the, are these some of the names of uh, the other, other ladies these are women who yeah, are, we have sleeping angels yeah. and um they are supporting us they're on our website these yeah there's i mean there's millions and millions of women that we could you know go ahead and say off. but you know we just want to say thanks to and send our love and everything to to like Alfie Hone's family, Angel Smart, Faith McKay, Riley Tozamorley, Callan Hills, Ashley Kirkham, Luke Abbott, Sky Reardon, and, and all the other Sleeping Angel families, you know, who are uniting with us and and backing us. You so know. We're, we're basically those children aren't forgotten. They're out no. there and they're in the cyber waves. And they're just, on our register. Just them, yeah, them <laughs> us putting them on site made a massive difference i had mothers emailing me just thanking me just for their name for to appear online human right, you know. that tiny little bit of positivity and having having the website and the facebook groups is pulling is loads pulling of people together making yeah, this, this a stronger not, story the only advertising we've actually done is ourselves which is just plugging through all social networking sites i mean we've had over a hundred thousand hits on our website we've got a group of thirty two thousand we've got the other two groups as well which are growing that's in less daily, than a year daily basis so you are actually reaching people yeah from that's why is it all over the world or yeah, just all over the country over the world, over the world. australia china america canada um have all come in um, and why can't England be like Australia and, ca and America? You bring know? the laws to the same. They're at yeah. 20 weeks. They're at yeah. 20 weeks. Then babies are surviving. You know, we had one in the paper recently in England of a baby that did survive.